All right, welcome to Geometry 7-2. We're looking at equations and lines uh, in the coordinate plane. And the first part of this, uh, of equations that we're looking at, is slope represented by the letter m. So the slope of a line represented by letter m uh, is the ratio of the vertical change, called the rise, so how much your line changes vertically, uh, to the ratio of the horizontal change, called the run, between any two points. So again, looking at a line, how much does the line change vertically, and the vertical is measured by your y-coordinates, uh, over the change horizontally, which is your x-coordinates. Let's look at an example. Looking at this line r here, the question says, find the slope of line r. So again, remember, the slope represented by m is our change in verticality over our change horizontally. So let's uh, begin to do this. Let me change my color. So let's call this um, our first, this is our first coordinate, and this is our second one. So the change y2 would be 1, and y1 would be 3. So let's write that in. So this equals 1 minus 3 over x2, which would be 1, over x1, which would be negative 2. So for 1 minus negative 2. Uh, now let's just simplify this. 1 minus 3 would be negative 2 on top. And on the bottom of the double negative here, this would be 1 plus 2, which is 3. So the slope is negative 2 thirds. And again, remember, negative 2 means that this point, to get to here, it had to go down 2. You can see 1, 2. And then it ran positively 3 to the right. 1, 2, 3. Um, just to show you another way to think about this, um, this negative here, uh, this would also be the same fraction if you think about the negative on the bottom. And this will work too. To get from this point to this point, you'd have to go up 2 because your 2 is positive. And since your x, your, your run is negative, you're going to go to the left. So up 2 to the left, 1, 2, 3. So remember, that negative on top or bottom, these are equivalent fractions. So you could, you could look at it either way. Let's just talk about all the different types of slope. Uh, so slope is, is red um, from left to right. So uh, as your x advances, remember, moving to the right, your x is going to become greater. So as that advances, how is your, is your y changing, right? Uh, and so using the purple one here, as, as, x, as, x goes, um, as x grows, your y also grows. Um, and this is called a positive slope. Let's look at the orange next. Uh, is the orange, as x advances, the y goes down, right? Uh, this is considered a negative slope. Oops, sorry. Negative slope. Um, th let's look at the green one. As x changes, y does nothing. And since it does nothing, this is called zero slope. And this one, x doesn't advance, right? Or as x go, it's just, you just have a vertical line, right? x isn't moving, nothing changes in y as x moves forward. And this is called undefined. I'll write it like this. Oops, sorry. All right, let's look at your slopes. Let's continue. All right, this, this should be reviewed from pre-algebra, but I just want to spend a little bit of time with um, the two forms of equations that we're using. One is slope-intercept form, and the other one is point-slope form. Um, now, these can you could use algebra to get these to look whatever way you want, um, but there's certain values in having your, your equations organized a certain way. Um, the most prominent way you see equations written is in slope-intercept form, meaning your equation has been solved for y. So you can see you have y equals, right? Um, filling in your slope and your y-intercept. We haven't talked about that, but b is your y-intercept. Filling those in with values. Again, you can see it's solved for y equals, all right? It's not y plus 1 or 2 thirds y or 2y or y minus 6. It's y equals. So when you solve for y and you're left with your x term and then a constant, um, this is in slope-intercept form. 
Uh, and just to look at this, let's graph a line in slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form gives us two parts of our line that we need to know. The first part is where we the entry point in is for the y-axis, or I'm sorry, yeah. So this the b is your y-intercept, and I'll label that. Your b is b is your y-intercept. Where does the line cross the y-axis? Uh, M we've talked about is your slope, your rise over run. So looking at this at this line right here, um, we're going to start from our point of one. This one is where it intercepts the y-axis, so that would go right here. And then we have a slope of two thirds, meaning uh, up to one, two, across one, two, three would be your next one. And let me just write that again. Two thirds is our slope. Remember, this is your change in verticality. And this is your change horizontally. So from this dot, the next dot would be up two spaces and to the right, one, two, three. So this is where our next dot would be. And you can continue that up two to the right, one, two, three. And just like we kind of learned um, with negatives in the last page, you also, an another equivalent ratio would be negative two over negative three. And this one's going to go down to the left. So we could start from here again and go down one, two, to the left, one, two, three. And you can see that this is the same, the same line that we're graphing. Uh, slope intercept form is very easy to graph a line in. Again, your constant at the end, whether it's positive, oh shoot, this is plus one. I'm so sorry. This whole graph should be up one. Let me do this. Let's we'll go. Here we are. There, now it's right. Okay. Plus one. All right, let's look at point slope form. And I'll change my color here to orange, just like that. So point slope, uh, as you can probably guess, gives you the slope, and it gives you a point of the line. And your point is going to be uh, right here. So here's going to be your x-coordinate of the point and here's going to be your y-coordinate of the point. And it's important to know and see that these are being subtracted uh, from x and subtracted from y, right? So in the example here, because this is a plus, that means that this 3 isn't positive 3, it's actually negative, because it must have been minus negative, and that's how we got to this 3. So uh, in, this, in the y-intercept example, we started by graphing our, our y-intercept at plus 1. In this case, we're going to graph our point first. So our point is at... Um, our x would be negative 3, again, because this needs to be minus negative 3, and that's how we got this plus here. Uh, and our y, since it is a minus, is positive 3. So that line is going to be at negative 1, 2, 3, positive 1, 2, 3. So there's our first line. And then we're going to use slope the same way. In this case, our slope is negative 2. Um, just to turn that into a ratio, negative 2 over 1. So this would go down 2 to the right 1. Right? Down to the right. Down because it's negative. To the right because it's positive. Down 2 to the right, 1. Down 2 to the right, 1. And just to show you conversely, we could also use 2 over negative 1. It's an equivalent fraction. And this equals up 2 to the left. Up because it's positive, to the left because it's negative. So from this first point, we can go up 2 to the left, 1. Up 2 to the left, 1. And this line would look like this. Graphing lines are very simple. Um, you just need to look at your equation. If you can't understand it, uh, the easiest way might be to solve for y, and then you can start with your slope-intercept form. Let's continue. Lastly, we'd be writing an equation for the line, and we will do both. So we will write 1 in slope-intercept. And we will write 1 in point-slope. So for slope-intercept, well, actually, slope-intercept, we really can't because we don't have a um, we don't have a whole number here for our intercept. Uh, we so it'll be a little bit more difficult. Let's we'll do that next. Let's just do point-slope first. So if point-slope again is y minus y one equals your slope times x minus x one. So we're just going to take a point. Let's take this one and plug it in here. So this would equal, and I'll use a different color just to show you. So this would be y 
plus, right, because our y coordinate well, well, is negative 1, so we'd have minus negative 1, and that would become a plus. So y plus 1 equals our slope, which we'll have to figure out in a sec. I'll leave that blank for now. x, and again, we have negative 3, so this is going to be minus negative 3, which is going to become plus 3. And to figure out our slope, uh, which we've looked at already in the last section, uh, we'll use, I mean, we could use any two. We'll use these two if you want. And your slope is a uh, change in y. So this is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So moving here, y2 would be 3 minus 1 over 7 minus 2. So this would be 2 fifths as a slope. And we can just write that in here, 2 fifths. So there we are in, oops, excuse me. Now, if we wanted to take this and write our slope-intercept form, uh, because we can't see visually this is a fraction, right? We can't see exactly where it crosses. So let's start with this equation. y plus 1 equals 2 fifths times x plus 3. And I'm going to erase this down here now. Get more room. And let's solve for y to put it in slope-intercept form. So solve for y. First, let's distribute the 2 fifths to both things in the parentheses. So y plus 1 equals 2 fifths x plus, and just to show you here, we have 2 fifths times 3 over 1. So that would be 6 fifths. And for now, we'll just leave that as an improper fraction. Equals 6 fifths. And then we're going to go minus 1, minus 1. So that would be minus 1 could be written as 5 fifths. So 6 fifths minus 5 fifths is 1 fifth. So now we have y equals 2 fifths x plus 1 fifth. And there we are, slope-intercept form. All right, good luck on your uh, section, and see you next time.